What is up TFC community? Uh, my name is Nick St. Louis and I live in Ottawa, Canada. And today I want to share with you some thoughts on the balance beam. This is a tool that um, we use a lot and we see a lot of value in. And today I want to share with you where the idea for the balance beam came from and some of the physical and mental benefits that you can get from a, a balance beam practice or using the balance beam as a tool to enhance your physical practice. Okay, and your physical practice might be training for a sport, it might be martial arts, it might be running. And I wanna to talk today about how something very simple um, and also very fun can help, uh, can help contribute positively to your training. To your current physical routine. So um, I'm, I'm the guy who had the idea for the balance beam uh, and this happened a while ago and I want to, I'll describe to you kind of where the idea came from but I want to start with saying two things. Number one is I'm just sharing with you the benefits that I've gotten from the beam and my understanding of how some of those benefits come about as a physical therapist. So understanding the body, and how muscles work and how injuries happen. Um, that's kind of one lens that I, that I look at this through. But the benefits that I get might not necessarily be, be the benefits that you get. Not from a physiological point of view because the same uh, physical things are gonna be happening with any other human and myself. But the benefits that you get from a beam practice depend on a lot of variables. Um, first of which is commitment to doing some every day. So the benefits I get from doing beam work every day might be different from the benefits that you get if you only do beam work once a week. So I just wanna share with you what I get. Uh, it's totally up to you how to take this and my goal is not to tell you what happens, it's to make you curious enough to try it yourself so that you can see uh, in your own experience what kind of benefits you can get from it. So um, where did the balance beam concept come from? Well. I realized uh, probably a couple years ago, whenever I would go on a course um, and travel, I would always want a little bit of time to just decompress and clear my brain. And I have a very, I have a brain that's very, I've had a hard time controlling or I've had, um, you know, a mental practice is something that I've struggled, you know, with daily meditation, um, struggled with for a long time. And so finding things to calm my brain down and not have so many thoughts ripping around up there that I can't control has always been something that I kind of seek out. And one thing I really found that helped with that was balancing on a railing. So whenever I went on a course, I would go for a walk outside and I would find a railing to balance on. And I found that by balancing on the railing and trying not to fall off, I actually was able to essentially block out a lot of the other distractions, what I had to do when I went home or what I had to do that evening or emails or whatever it was, nothing else kind of really was on my radar. It was just not falling off the beam. So I realized pretty quick that balancing on a balance beam was actually a really powerful form of active meditation where you just pay attention, be present and just focus on your body. So that's kind of where it all started. And then we started getting people asking us if we could, well, actually even before that, I realized the clinic that I worked in, how can I replicate a railing in the clinic? So I looked up industrial scaffolding um, equipment or industrial scaffolding uh, materials and essentially found aluminum pipe and cast aluminum couplings. So the most durable materials I could find because if I was gonna make something for the clinic, I didn't mind it being expensive, but I wanted it to last forever. And so we started using these in the physio clinic and patients that were either young or old, uh, injured or looking for performance gains, everyone would use it at some point and everyone had kind of a different way of using it, right? Like an 80 year old might just work to stand on it for maybe like a couple seconds um, and without looking down and it would work, it would make their body do a bunch of things without them even really having to think about it. It was just don't look down, don't fall off. If you do fall off, you don't have far to go. And so the 80 year old could use it and yet the 14 year old kid that came in who wanted to be a faster runner or had knee pain, and whose hips didn't do what they were supposed to because he sat all day, could get on the beam and the same playful kind of approach made his brain start to engage his hip muscles again. All the deep hip rotators that tend to kind of go offline if we don't use them. And if we're sitting all day, we're really not using them very much. So a lot of people that came into the clinic would get benefit, doesn't matter, didn't matter how old they were or for what reason. And so we realized that part of the power of the beam wasn't even from the focus training or mental training perspective, although that was a really big part of it. 
um, and I'll explain why that's important now in a, in a couple minutes, but from a physical standpoint, um, they could all use it and the power of it came from the fact that it was fun. People would always smile and laugh because it wasn't, it, you didn't tell someone exactly what to do. There was no right or wrong way of doing it apart from don't look down and don't fall off. Apart from that, it was fully up to you how to creatively solve the problem because it's really constraints-based training, right? We have several constraints. When, like just balancing on one leg on a balance beam is basically you have a set of constraints. Constraint number one, you have gravity. So gravity wants to haul you down to the planet. You have to do what you can to fire the muscles and stack your joints in a way that doesn't let you pancake down on the planet. So gravity is constraint number one. Constraint number two, it's a narrow circular object that you're balancing on which means it's a smaller surface, it's more challenging to balance. And constraint number three is you, don't, you can't look down at the ground. So you can't use visual input to assist your body, okay? Now, I mean, that's kind of the deeper way of explaining it, but when you explain it to someone, it's just don't look down, don't fall off, that's it. And inevitably, people are always used to being told how to do certain things like movements or exercises. So like, well, what do I do with my hands or what? It doesn't matter, don't look down, don't fall off. That's all you had to say. And so this constraints-based training would make their brain reactively solve the problem of don't fall off, don't look down, and fight gravity. And it would do it in, a, in whatever way it found was most efficient. And the most efficient way to do that is to stack all your joints vertically to make sure that you're in this really tight base of support or center of mass. Put your center of mass in a really tight base of support and focus on making quick adjustments to make sure you don't get out of that um, base of support, right? Another really important thing for people that are learning a new skill or behavior, apart from it, you know, if it's fun, it's, gonna, it's more likely to be done. But being able to see your improvement and feeling good about the fact that you are improving is a very powerful element in, in motivation when it comes to working on a task or a behavior. Um, and so the feedback is immediate, right? If you fall off, that's a negative feedback. If you're staying on, it's positive feedback, right? And you can extrapolate that down and, and break it down in terms of how efficient you're being based on how much time you're spending in the positive feedback section versus negative. So if at the start you're on there and you balance for two seconds and then you, and then you come off because you lost your balance. Well, if the next time you do it, you balance for 10 seconds, you just, multiple, you just become 500% better in a very short period of time. And the biggest reason improvements can happen very quickly with the beam is because the improvements you're making are not building more muscle, okay? They are not improving your endurance. All it is is neuromuscular training. So your brain is getting better at understanding what muscles are required to fire in order to stop you from falling off. And it's reinforcing the speed that those muscles fire at. Okay? Now that's very important because that is essentially a, a very important element of injury prevention. Right? You get in some funky position at a football game, well if your brain's seen that before and it can react quickly, you can fire the right muscles at your hip to bring your knee out of the vulnerable position, which is collapsing inward. This is how a lot of ACL tears happen. Okay? So, and even if you're out here, right? If I'm on the beam and I'm leaning to the outside and my brain has encountered the situation where my the load is going laterally on my ankle and my ankle is inverting and it can train and I can train myself in a controlled environment to fire my hip muscles to bring my knee back. I can stop an ankle sprain and I can stop an ACL tear by improving my ability to protect against those vulnerable positions um, in a playful way without really having to think, am I firing this? Am I firing that? Your brain just fires the right muscle at the right time at the right speed in order to not let you get into that vulnerable position. Okay. So, that was a really long-winded explanation, but hopefully that made sense. Um, so from a physical benefits point of view, anyone can use it. The benefits are powerful because it's reactive training based on constraints. And a couple of the physical benefits from beam work, if you do it consistently. Number one, a lot of shoes compress our feet together. And when you're on a balance beam, because it's rounded, I'm not sure if you can see from there, but all the bones in my foot, the metatarsals, start to cup around the balance beam. So they're splaying apart, right? And by spreading out and creating space between each of those bones, it's counteracting the effect of shoes squishing our bones together. And that's a big, you know, squishing the bones together is a big reason for things like Morton's neuroma, where a nerve, an intermetatarsal nerve, is getting compressed and irritated, okay? 
Another thing it's doing is making me really, really use my toes. So when my foot's on here, my little pinky toe is working. All of my toes are working as little tentacles to try and help me stay stable on the beam. Okay, my big toe, everything, all these foot muscles are working to try and make sure that my foot stays stable. So it's splaying the bones of my foot, it's making the muscles of my foot work. A really important part of this is the fact that it's forcing my foot to act as a sensor so my foot and my ankle are telling my brain signals about what's happening, because I'm not looking down there. So my body has to communicate that to my brain without my eyes telling it what's going on. My brain is then computing that and it's sending a signal to my hip of how it should fire in order to stop me from falling off. That happens at like lightning speed, right? I'm not sure how many times a second, but I would say conservatively hundreds of times per second. My foot, my ankle are sending signals to my brain. My brain says, fire this at the hip. The hip fires and it stops me from falling off. And if I'm here, you know, every single one of these little movements that I'm making is essentially the brain cueing a different solution to the problem of falling off. So standing on here, if my knee comes in, my brain goes like, my brain fires a signal, fires my external rotators and aligns my knee again. If I'm falling that way, my brain says, fire the leg over there, pull the, push the arm over there. Now you're not really aware of all this because you're just reacting, right? All you have to do is really be calm, breathe, and let the brain do exactly what it, what it is fully capable of doing, better than what you can do consciously. And it's just processing data, there's a problem, solve it, problem, solve it. And what that whole thing is doing is it's plugging back in these deep hip stabilizers, okay? And when we spend a lot of time in hip neutral flexion without the load of gravity, without really any movement, AKA sitting in a chair, we start to lose like the, basically if a muscle is not used, the muscle is, it starts to atrophy or the signaling pathway from your brain to that muscle starts to weaken. So if we're not using these deep stabilizers during the day, because we're spending a lot of time sitting, those deep stabilizers aren't very good at firing, right? And even muscles like your glutes become not very good at firing because they're just not being used very much. And in fact, when you spend a lot of time here, it inhibits being able to get into these other important positions like rotation and extension that are required in order to fully recruit these hip muscles, right? This is where your power comes from. This is where protecting your lower extremity comes from. If the hip is broken, the knees have to do way more work and the knees and the ankles are vulnerable to injury. Okay. So it replugs in, it makes the foot act as a sensor to give your brain signals. It makes your brain really good at talking to the hip to tell it what to do to stop you from falling off. And so from a physical benefit point of view of improving stability, and if you improve stability, you improve power output. If you improve stability, you help prevent injuries. Like I said, ACL tear, ankle sprain. If you improve stability, you make yourself a way more robust athlete for anything that's in standing. So apart from maybe playing chess, it's basically gonna help with every single athletic endeavor because it just improves your body awareness and improves your hip stability, okay? So it offsets the effects of sitting, it offsets the effects of shoes. Now from a mental standpoint, okay, we live in a world that, we live in a world of distraction and there's a lot of money invested, billions of dollars from companies looking to steal your attention because attention is now a commodity. When you pay attention to something, companies make money from that. And so companies are investing huge amounts of money to find out how best to take your attention because that's profitable. Which is why, you know, we're getting distracted 24 seven. Dings on our phones, emails, Netflix. Um, we're always getting distracted because we have unlimited options to distract ourselves. And when you lose the ability, when you're always being distracted, you lose the ability to focus. And being able to focus is a very important skill, right? Being able to concentrate and calm your mind and avoid distraction. It's important if you wanna get, um, if you wanna be productive when it comes to work. It's important when it comes to listening to others. It's important when it comes to building a mental health practice like meditation. You need to be able to focus and concentrate and eliminate the background noise and focus on one thing. This makes you do that in a very playful, fun way. If it's not fun, it will not be done. If it's fun and it's enjoyable and you feel the benefits and you're getting positive feedback and it's helping your body, it's really easy to make this a habit if you believe in, in what it can do and you actually find enjoyment in doing it. 
right? I'll always, almost always play music when I'm on the beam and you can kind of embed a little bit of dance into it and kind of have more flow. Um, I won't get too deep into, I won't talk about flow, but flow state being in this, in the zone, you might have heard that before, where time doesn't really matter, you're completely immersed in what you're doing. Um, that's something that, that feeling of flow is a massive element of happiness also. Uh, work by Mihai Chicks and Mihai, he's like the godfather of flow, talks about that a lot, but um, flow is, it maximizes creativity. Um, flow can make you really, really just fully immersed in what you're doing when it comes to reconnecting with your body it can be very powerful. So it's a mental focus training tool. That's what I would say is its primary utility. If someone asks what's the benefit of beam work, well it lets you, it gives you a playful tool to use in a creative way that's fun, that is massive, massively physical, physically beneficial for your body has a lot of potent training effects when it comes to the physical body in terms of improving performance or reducing injuries. Um, it has a lot of physical benefits, but it's a mental training tool above everything else. Because when you get better at paying attention to standing on a balance beam and holding your balance and staying calm, you get better at harnessing and having control over your mind, which allows you to avoid getting stuck in emotions which allows you to spend time with your own thoughts without always feeling like you're distracted, which means you can spend, you can be a better listener so that when people are talking to you, you can have the ability to focus on what they're saying and give them the attention that they need if you're helping someone out or if you want to spend time with your family. Um, so anyway, that's really what the beams are all about. We make beams, but we encourage people actively to make their own beams. Okay, the material that we use is Schedule 40 aluminum pipe. Schedule 40 means a slightly thicker sidewall, which essentially we tested a bunch of different types of, of pipe and tubing. Um, and we stuck on this one because at six feet, which tends to be a good length if you have the amount of space and, you're, um, and if you're buying one of our beams, if you can afford one of the more expensive beams, um, tends to be the sweet spot and at six feet schedule 40 aluminum pipe will not bend or deform permanently. It does have some flex, so you can kind of balance it a little bit, but if you get three 300 pound humans on here, it's not gonna bend and warp, um, which is why we give lifetime warranty on all of our hardware. So if anything ever happens to it, you just send it back to us and we'll send you a new one um, because they're kind of built to be bulletproof. And the only reason we make these things is because people were asking us if we could make them for them. Certainly if you're resourceful enough, go find some pipe. You can use a piece of PVC tubing, schedule 40 or 80 PVC pipe. Uh, we sell cradles or you can make your own cradle to stop it from rolling around. Um, and we essentially just made beams because we love making really nice looking stuff. We find these to be, they're very simple. Like the Elevate only has three parts. It's a piece of pipe and then two couplings. Um, but we like making unique things. And if something's important to you and you use it every day, it's kind of cool to have something that has your personality on it. So we're gonna make different colors, different styles. We also make maple beams, which are made from Canadian hardwood. So more eco-friendly. It's just a, a wooden dowel with the logo engraved um, of a really high grade hardwood grown in Canada and two rubber cradles. So it's pretty minimal in terms of the amount of materials we use and the footprint that we make on the planet. Um, and then our Elevate beams and the metal tubing are powder coated. So it's basically a, a vehicle grade finish. Um, we'll never peel. The paint is actually sprayed on in a powder and then it's baked in an oven. So it's extremely durable. Um, but we sell beams because that's the main way people support us and allow us to keep digging into you know, the utility of the beam, uh, being able to continue making beautiful hardware, um, and also focusing on content so that we can expand beyond the beam and into just lifestyle education so that people can understand what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to be healthy. Because it's actually really simple. And our goal is to simplify it and also make, um, you know, share actionable tools that our team has used in our lives in order to make progress on our health journey. Um, because health is an ideal. It's not something you'll, it's not a thing you ever reach. It's something you strive towards every day. And um, the small decisions you make all day long are what determines your health over the long term. So anyway, that's what the beam's about. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
And uh, if you liked it, leave a comment, or if you have questions about it, leave a comment. And uh, thanks for listening. Catch you later.